Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 7.0, and today is day 24. So yesterday we talked about our opportunity checklist and our documents tab. We kind of walked through the documents tab, the folders and compliance. Today we're going to dive into the DocuSign connection within Command Opportunities to kind of show you how your uh, documents can be auto-loaded depending on your compliance team, and then kind of a brief introduction to DocuSign. So let's jump in by clicking on the Opportunities applet. And we are going to go into our fake opportunity here with our fictional characters, Marge and Homer Simpson. We're gonna click on the opportunity. We're gonna go into the Documents tab. <clears throat> and you'll notice here on the right-hand side, offline between videos, I did connect my DocuSign account to this demo account. And so now I have the ability to click on Start a Transaction. Guys, it's really important to note that this Start a Transaction button is available to click before you choose a checklist. Don't do it. Make sure that you have a checklist selected before you connect this opportunity to DocuSign. You only get one chance to connect it to DocuSign. And if you have not selected one of your checklists, then all of these documents that would auto-populate when you do choose a checklist will not auto-populate in your room. So basically, you're, you're kind of missing out on the work that your compliance team has done in connecting these documents if you don't choose the checklist first because DocuSign doesn't know what documents to upload. So now that I've chosen my residential listing checklist, I'm going to go ahead and come over to the Start a Transaction button. And what this is going to do is automatically connect this opportunity to DocuSign Rooms, and it's going to pre-populate all of those DS forms, right? All of these forms inside the checklist that had DS next to them. You can see there are six of those. Those are automatically brought into my DocuSign Room. Now, this doesn't mean that this is all the documents that I may need for this transaction, and yet at least the ones that are included on this checklist are auto-populated. So it's definitely a great start. In addition, now that I'm inside of my DocuSign room, you'll note that if I come into the Details tab, some of my details have already been pre-populated for me as well. On the right-hand side, you can see the seller's name and email. Now, we didn't have a phone number attached to either of these contacts, but if we did, the phone number would have pulled in as well. So I've got seller one and seller two. In addition, if we scroll down to listing agent, you can see it's got my listing agent name, phone number, email, address, all of that is also associated with this actual opportunity. So all of that information was pulled over. You can see the opportunity name matches the DocuSign room name. So this was actually pulled in from the opportunity. The name of my room is the same as the name of my opportunity. So that's nice because when I come into documents and I begin to go through each of these documents, some of that information will auto-populate. So now these are Texas-based forms from our actual library here in Texas. Your forms are gonna look different depending on what state that you're in. But I did just wanna go through an example of pulling up one of the forms. So we're gonna pull up our actual one to four family residential contract here in Texas. And you'll see when this form updates or, or uploads and opens, the information for my sellers has automatically been included. So you can see there's seller one name and there's seller two name. If there's any place in your document that has a tag for seller one and two, their information should be auto-populated. In addition, here on the last page of this document, the broker firm name was auto-populated. Listing associate, in this case, I'm in my demo account, right? But you can see my name would come in here. My email is auto-populated and my brokerage address is auto-populated. So it's a decent start, right? There's still some information that could be brought over as well. Um, if I had actually connected this opportunity to a listing in the MLS, then I would have had some auto-population of that address information as well. Uh, but because this has not been loaded to the MLS, that information did not come over yet. So if this is the first time that you have seen DocuSign, uh, you'll notice, first of all, that you have several tabs across the top. Uh, the most important tabs for you most likely are going to be your Details tab, 
your Documents tab and your Envelopes tab. Inside of this Documents tab, you're gonna see all of the documents involved in this transaction that were auto-loaded from the connection that your compliance team has made from command. If you do need to add additional documents, you can always come in to the Add button here at the top right. And this is gonna say, where do you want to pull those documents in from? Now, if you pull them in from your computer, Dropbox, Google Drive, etc., they're going to be a flat PDF, meaning there will be no auto population of any forms, any initials, any signatures, any names. You're basically gonna to have to be doing all of the work. So I highly recommend that you attempt to bring in your forms from DocuSign Forms where appropriate. So if I click on DocuSign Forms, it's basically gonna open up all of the libraries that my account is connected to. And then you can see a list of all of the documents that are inside of that actual account. So if it was a form I needed from HAR, you could see that, that's the Houston Association of Realtors, that's my local board. Then you could also see all of the forms from TXR, which is our statewide board. And here all of those forms would be as well. Now your market center may have also created some form groups and you can see those here underneath the groups tab. These would be forms that you might need for each one of these actual listings, buyer transactions, et cetera. Um, this again is set up by your market center compliance team. So these groups may look different for you, but for example, if I wanted to see what my market center is set up underneath the residential form group library, I can click on that. And then you can actually see all of the documents that are in this form group and I can decide whether I need to use them or not. You can also see that there are some documents in here that my market center is already telling me are required, right? And I've actually got some copies of those documents included already. So let's just say, for example, uh, they're financing the offer for this purchase. Uh, well, that's this is a listing, not a buyer. That's a bad example. Um, let's just say that uh, this listing is in what we call a water district or maybe an HOA. Right, those are a couple of different forms inside of our form library. So here's the one for a water district. I need that document added. Here's the one for an HOA. I need that document added. I can go through and select any additional items. Let's say we've got a non-realty items addendum because they're gonna leave behind some things and they wanna exclude some things, etc. cetera. Uh, I gotta have my seller's disclosure. Here's my residential property offer, David you're gonna know what you need for each one of your states. And if you haven't, you need to go to your brokerage and take some additional training with regards to contracts and compliance. But this is how I would add those additional documents to our folder. So now we have walked through how the connection to DocuSign works and what forms would be auto-populated based upon the DS logo that you see inside of this checklist and then how to add additional forms. Now, if I had some forms on my actual computer, I could do that, add them from there. It would basically just bring up the computer browser and my file folders, and I could go through that and add those documents as well. The difference between the two, again, remember, if I'm actually loading up documents that came in from uh, a form, more often than not, they're gonna allow for some auto-population of data and some auto-populations of initials and signatures. We'll show that to you tomorrow when we go through the process of adding actual information to these forms inside of DocuSign and then how to drop in initials and signatures for the signing process. That's it for today, guys. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And as always, I'll look forward to talking to you again real soon.